quiet, we're going to take you to the dressing room. The heavily moustached Pierre Pitsier looks rather like a military man from olden days. And I wonder if those memories of the Riddick Bow fight only last July, I wonder if they're still with him. He's going to be outweighed tonight by 23 and a half pounds. That's uh, a lot to give away to a known puncher. But to be fair to Kudzir, when you look through his record, you have to say that he's appeared to be durable, no matter what the class of opposition may have been. And the only man to have stopped him so far in all his fights has been Riddick Bowe. And although he cuts, he has never lost a fight through being stopped that way. fanfare as Pierre Couture, the 30 year old, follows the South African flag into this Wembley Arena ring, which has become almost like a home to the man he must face tonight. Uh, Frank Bruno has had so many of his fights in this ring, so many dramatic wins. And here's the man himself, Franklin Roy Bruno, MBE. And looking like a man who's ready to go to work. Weighing in today at a massive 17 stone 6, that is 10 pounds heavier than he was in his last fight here with Jose Ribalta in April. And some six to 7,000 people now awaiting his entrance into the arena. And he's going to get an almighty cheer. one of the best receptions Bruno's ever had. Swathed in white. And that is what he's done over the years. Just the three defeats and two of those came in world title fights against Tim Witherspoon and Mike Tyson. these electric moments that you always get before the start of an important heavyweight fight. And Kutsia's record, he too has lost just three times. The only man to stop him, as we said earlier, the useful American prospect, Riddick Bowe. Our MC is Mike Chimfield. Oh, I'm 
judges in attendance tonight to score this because this is an official eliminator for the IBF version of the world title. Evander Holyfield is their champion. So three judges will score. Roy Francis is the non-scoring referee. For the last time Frank Bruno met a South African in this ring. The South African lasted one minute and 50 seconds. Bruno and Kutzia. And just as everybody imagined, Kutzia is going to come for Bruno. Bruno won't have to go looking for him. from Bruno and the South African who knows this is his last chance to get anywhere near a world title fight has come to fight Bruno has quite a lot of reach advantage although Kutzia is actually an inch taller hitting and holding Moustache, Kutir really does look like a man from another age. And already, the stabbing left hand of Bruno is proving a deterrent to Kutir. He's finding it difficult to get past it. Bruno weighs this, this massive 17 stone 6 and still looks quite lively on his feet. And Cooks here getting clubbed to the head even in the clinch but once again Bruno told by Roy Francis not to hold and Kutsia throwing plenty of punches in these little flurries and certainly Frank doesn't want to take any chances So far, Bruno hasn't come across with the really big right hand, the one that destroyed Rivalta a few months ago. Bruno has a quiet, saucy look at Kutsir as they part at the end of the opening round, which Bruno pinched, mostly on the left hand. The occasional right tip to the head. Quite a hard opening round because Kutsir was always coming towards him. I don't know what our two guests up in the studio feel about that. Can we have a word from either one of them? Yes. What? Well, go ahead, Gary. You go ahead, Leonard. 
I, I would feel that uh, Coulter actually won that first round, Harry, because he was he was on the attack from the beginning, from the from the first spell he was on the attack. I feel Bruno needs to, you know, step on that jab when he's coming back with that hook, throw the right hand right after the hook. I he's, think, sorry, I think now, Harry. Frank's been put in with someone who's putting up a test. He's been hit back. Now we're going to see whether Frank's ready for a world title challenge after this or not. Second belt, round two. Okay, so the clear gist of opinion upstairs is that uh, Bruno's got a lively opponent. looking very red in the face he's got that mark underneath the right eye that he picked up sparring with uh, Joe Budner's son his head it's his own left jab getting to work and still the big right hand hasn't come over from Frank Appearing at the side of Kutsia's left eye's cut, underneath the eye, doesn't look too bad, but the first damage has appeared. Quite a dangerous looking left hook from Kutsia there. Sounds all the makings of a fair old bat. Waters here with Royal Francis with that holding. There's the left hook of Kutsias again. That might be the, the biggest danger punch he has. I don't think Bruno has unleashed the bit, the really big gun jet. And again, Bruno gives him a, a long sidelong glance as they parted the bell. Bruno unmarked. But uh, we know that uh, Kutsir has got some slight damage to the left eye and this is probably how it was caused with uh, those left jabs being pushed through and a bit of elbow to go with it. South African, it's on the other side, the cut, it's, uh, I think it's just underneath the left eye, it's not serious, but there certainly was a smear of blood there. 10 seconds. Second jump, round three. had under eight minutes competitive boxing in the last three and a half years. 
And if this goes any distance, that might tell. And again, the left hook from Couture's, I think that's her Bruno. The left hook, which was the danger punch in the second round, has found him again. And I'm pretty certain Bruno felt that quite hard. with the left hand. He's really got to find the big punch here to deter this South African. But sir uh, threatening to rough him up. But sir uh, always crouching in and ducking in under the big punches. Not giving Bruno, too much chance to get set to throw the big right. Bruno clubbing him down inside, but not with full leverage. Round three. We know that Kutsir can take a punch, and he can certainly give one. Roy Francis is just beginning to lose his rag with Bruno. Big attack by Kutsir, and Bruno doesn't want to stand around in the corner and get caught with those. Couture manages to take those clubbing right hands. Most of them he's taking on the top of the head because he's coming in, crouching. Big attack by Bruno. And the action swaying from one side to the other. That was a tough round. And I'm sure... But the men upstairs, Lennox Lewis and Gary Mason, will confirm that uh, this is as hard a fight as Frank's had for some time. Definitely, uh, Harry. Uh, Bruno's doing the right thing. He's definitely doing what he's supposed to with that jab. That's what he's going to need to do. Just keep him off with the jab and, and prepare Kutsu with the, for the right hand, the club in right hand, which is going to end it. I think this fight's going to come down to who wants it most. Both men think they've got everything to fight for at this stage, and Kutsia has come here to really have a fight. Frank's been caught the first time since Mike Tyson, and now we'll see whether Frank has got the real ambition or desire to become world champion or to challenge for the world title. Okay, Gary, thank you. 10 seconds. This fight being sponsored by Mirror Group Newspapers. Second up, round four. Well, it's the sort of test that Frank Bruno had to have if he was going to uh, make good his ambitions to go for another world title fight. It never looked like being easy on paper. But so beginning to look slightly weary. He's taken a few clubbing punches to the head and they may be beginning to have their effect and maybe the punches that Riddick Bow caught him with only three or four months ago. They might tell him this fight too. coming back into it again the moment Frank eases up the South African is straight back at him it's not the 
the cleanest of fights. A bit of elbow going in. Could see his cut under the right eye. That's the injury he brought in with him. And it's opened up again. And underneath the eye is not dangerous. body has looked his best punch so far apart from the now the niggling jab all the time in Kutsir's face and that's caused the cut under the right eye round four It certainly would be Kutzir. Bruno's cautioned about the shoulder now. He's done the elbow, the shoulder. He's done a bit of holding. He's still holding with the left hand. That's the old Muhammad Ali trick. Low one from Kutzir. Bruno really needs to keep him away. He doesn't want him too close in. And that is another very hard run for these two men. And could see enough. Clearly marked under both eyes. But I don't think they'll disturb him too much. If Bruno wants to win this fight, he's going to have to club this man into the ground. Would you agree with me, Lennox? Yes, Harry, could you repeat Sorry, that, Harry? please? I said, if Bruno wants to get rid of him, he's going to have to club him into the ground. Definitely. He's doing the right thing. Things are starting to open up when he uses that jab. He, do he doesn't really need to get into a fight with him. He, he should really keep him at bay. And at this stage, I think both men are very weary. It's a hard fight. If Frank could go back to using the long jab that he has, it will actually now become the deterrent. But if he continues to stay close quarters with Kutsia, it will allow Kutsia the confidence that he needs. And the South African now comes out, I think, Seven three cuts. I think he's got a very slight one above the right eye as well as under. And it is essential if Bruno's going to win this, that he tries to keep him at long range, not only to keep himself out of trouble, where he can get some leverage to get his own right hand to work. cut above the right eye, as puts here, becoming more obvious as it begins to bleed again. And this is a real tough mole. That's a good right. That's one of the best right hands that Bruno's put across so far. And this South African demonstrates his resilience. He took it so well. A lot of Bruno's past opponents would have collapsed like a deck chair at that point. close quarter stuff that he doesn't really need but here now I think he's cut above the left eye as well I think he's now got four cuts now one of these cuts is bleeding very badly but he's slowly being uh, pierced and perforated around the eyes Again, this clubbing right hand, which is about the only time Bruno's really you know, able to use his right hand. He's so close in all the time, he has to bring it down, chopping onto the top of the head. Could see far from beaten at this point. He's still got some strength left. 
and not one bit of his courage has been drained out of him yet. Roy Francis having a very close look at Kutsia's face there as he parted them. The two of them now, I think, are desperately tired. rounds halfway point but could see his face now very heavily marked although he's not bleeding badly I'm pretty certain he's cut above and below both eyes I may be wrong about the left but I thought I saw blood there that's the worst cut the one underneath the right eye but it's not too dangerous in that position there's a nasty looking diagonal cut above the right eye which could become very awkward here's some replay from that last round that was a a good, not one of Bruno's best punches, but one of the best he's thrown in this fight. And he's simply not being allowed the chances. He's got a live opponent who's moving around and closing in on him all the time. Second up, round six. So a grueling heavyweight fight in the Wembley Arena. The 17 stone six. Frank Bruno in his 38th fight, his third in this comeback against the man from Pretoria, Pia Kutzia, in his 43rd fight tonight. Now sometimes in past fights when they've gone any distance, Bruno has uh, begun to look a little short of ideas and sometimes runs out of steam after about six rounds. We're in the sixth. And Bruno really needs to go to work. Begin to jab with the right hand now. Strange tactics. Well, those six weeks of training now, this is where it's got to pay off if it's going to pay off. Bruno's breathing hard. And again, the elbow and the shoulder going in from Bruno. Tries the big slashing right hand. And that only stirs puts here into action. certainly could see is, is definitely cut above the left eye now looking rather worse again the elbow in his face Roy France is telling him yet again and Bruno's having to take quite a few punches in order to get his own in that's about a right hand and a left of the body as well from Bruno and Kutsia is going through a very rough passage at the moment. Heads and shoulders banging together. A lot of dirty work going on and I have to say it, most of it coming from Bruno. is cut in many places he's far from beaten Lennox what do you feel about it I feel that Frank's doing the right thing as he uses that left jab things always open up for him he's slowly dissecting code sir that's the way I see it I think that Frank's fighting the wrong sort of fight at this stage he's getting involved he's mixing and it's gonna come to who has the will Kutsi is a better in-close fighter than Frank so Frank should take it on the outside 
take advantage of the cuts around the eyes that we can see now and work from there. Okay. Two gentlemen upstairs, not quite agreeing. <laughs> but it's a uh, hard part. There's the heads rubbing together. It's the shoulder and the elbow. There, this is shoulder going in from Bruno. That's the sort of thing that's incurring the wrath of Roy Francis. Not so much the head. Ten seconds. Well, this is the longest fight Bruno's had since the one with Bugner, Joe Bugner. Seconds out. Back in Round October seven. 1987 at the Spurs football ground. That went eight rounds, and Bruno stopped him in the eighth. And now we're in the seventh of this one. Well, everybody said that one day Frank Brenner would have to have a real test. He's certainly getting it tonight. Bruno's mouth showing signs of damage. Puts here a really rugged battler from the old school. Urgently calling to their man now, push him off, get to him, come on, Frank. That is still there and he's still coming back at him. And it's become, as I think Gary Mason said earlier, a battle of wills. Who wants it more? And Kutzer is in a lot of trouble now. But again, he manages to get out of the corner and comes back with a left hook. Bravery of a very high order. Another couple of big socking right hands. Couture tries to find his own. But the pain from those cuts on the face, the pain from this incessant hammering, must be getting through even to this Iron Man from South Africa. Well, we all knew that Kutzir was a tough man. I wonder if we realised he was quite as tough as he is. Bruno's not very careful here. He could just get himself slung out. And Frank can't put him on the floor. Bruno's lower lip bleeding quite heavily. A rough, tough, but fascinating fight because it's not over yet. And you don't quite know what might happen here. They're doing their utmost to really put new life and new determination into Kutzir, who's cut around both eyes, but is still going to come out for the eighth. Bruno had him in trouble several times here against the ropes, but he could never find the punch to put him down. Some of those body punches would, well, they tear me in half. An almost too grim look at the battered face of the South African. Ten seconds. Seconds out. Round eight. Kutzir's cuts have been cleaned up. Three rounds left. Redly under the lights. And a 
again he takes a second left hook Bruno that was a good punch we could see and it's going to take all of Bruno's determination here to weather this got rid of this man in seven rounds it's taking Frank a little longer he hasn't got rid of him yet either but Sears still amazingly still finding strength from somewhere he's the one coming forward because two or three people around me helped push him back and so for the first time in the eighth round Bruno's right hand suddenly came through and Kutsir went down he hasn't been down too many times in his career and here's the chance for Bruno to bring it all to an end in dramatic fashion it took him eight rounds to really get through towel has come in from the South African corner it's all over they pulled puts here out of the fight that's a pretty humane gesture because he was going to take more punishment and Bruno lifts his arms a lot he's come through a very very severe test indeed and come through it triumphantly but what a struggle it was and there were moments in that fight you have to say when you wondered whether he would come through it successfully but he did in the eighth round when the South African corner tossed the towel in and indicated that they wished their man to be rescued some fight well these were the dramatic closing moments that was the punch that started it all off a huge right hand to the top of the head took him to the ropes and then I think the punch had still left him dazed and he came out on top of one of my monitors here stunning punch and he hadn't really recovered when Bruno came from again and he couldn't support himself sufficiently to stop himself tumbling through the ropes and if people hadn't been here to push him back he might not have got back so a typical Bruno attack at the finish when he has them going he knows how to finish them and the official decision, not a retirement. The towel is not actually accepted, but the referee has stopped the fight in the eighth round. And Frank Bruno, in his 35th win in a 10-year professional career, bows to the crowd and takes his applause and knows that he's been through a fight. It took a long time before he finally managed to crack this man's resistance. And really, if helping hands hadn't been there, I think Kutsia might have been on the floor outside the ring. Gentlemen, your appreciation, please, for the loser, Pierre Kutsia. And the MC calls for the well-deserved applause for a very gallant opponent, Pierre puts here who knows now that his world title ambitions are over and Frank Bruno knows that the world is still there for taking now then let's have an opinion from the gentleman upstairs thank you Harry yes uh, Frank obviously had to go to work tonight and perhaps Kutsu was a better opponent than we uh, chaps here anticipated before the fight right Gary I mean he, he put up a pretty good show have you heard of the, the saying Dutch courage? Because um, you can see he's, a, he's an African, he's a, like a Dutch South African, and I suppose he fought with the pride that I think he had to do before he, go, he went home. And he provided Frank with a, a well-needed test. Now we have an idea of where Frank may fit in in the world rankings. And where's that? Frank, Frank deservedly is in the world rankings, and he could step in maybe around fourth or fifth or somewhere like that, but he still needs one more test 
and he, he's ready for another test. He's ready now, in straight into another fight, and then maybe anything could happen after that. What did, Lennox, what did you think overall about Frank? He, he didn't seem to have such a sharp jab as he's had in previous fights. I thought the weight was very apparent because of the fact that... Carrying I, too much weight, you think? Almost. Yes, definitely, because his, uh, his jabs lacked a lot of snap behind it. What I'm used to seeing Frank Bruno with a snappy jab, especially in his last fight, there was a lot, a lot of snap behind his punch. This one, he was kind of less pouring it out and preparing for the right, big right hand. And that's what, that was his honey punch, the big right hand. But he dissected the South African very well. He certainly dissected him in certain ways too, didn't he? It was a pretty dirty fight, Gary, wasn't it? Well, Frank used all the tricks of the trade. If um, Kusi had used them on Frank, there'd be a lot more screaming, but if Frank does, it's okay. Yeah. What about um, the sort of punches that Frank had to take in that? I mean, did you feel that Kutza had a weight behind his punch very much, Lennox? Not really, because uh, watching a lot of tapes on Kutza, I know Frank did. Uh, the best punch that Kotsa could have is honey punches his left hook and Frank did the right thing kept on turning him nudging him back and kept him off balance mm. I never thought honestly watching the fight that Kutsa was ever going to win it did you Gary? No there were times that when I'd be like we see here now where Kutsa was coming back with some counters this is the 8th this, this is, is the 8th when it, when it, when it ended when they caught him around the side I think he had had enough by then but Kutsia did catch Frank with some punches which is a worrying thing because when he steps up a, another grade he's going to be hit like that with guys that have the like real venomous punches and that's something that's worrying that's why I'd say you reserve judgment on whether he should go straight into a major mm. title fight next or not. These are the closing moments. The towel came in, which has no effect, but the referee made his own decision to step in there and stop it. And it was quite right. A good stoppage, wasn't it? Because he didn't want the man to get any more hurt than he was getting hurt at that uh, stage. But uh, we can hear from Frank now because he's with Harry. Frank, congratulations. Thank you, you very much, you Harry. You don't want him too much harder than that, do you? Um, not really, Harry, but as you can well know, that I've been at the ring for three years and I need some... You know what I mean? Some, take me more than two rounds, Harry. He took me eight rounds. He was a very tough guy. People are going to start saying, oh, you should have knocked him out earlier. But he's a tough guy, a durable guy, Harry. Now, he didn't let you do your best work for a long time because he kept crowding you. You knew he'd come, uh, didn't yeah, you? Uh, yeah, I knew he'd come, Harry, and he did come, you know? Right. And he was throwing some sort of like left hooks and uh, uppercuts and all sorts of different shots. And that, that's the sort of work I need, Harry. Right. One or two left hooks seem to me to hurt you quite badly. Is that right? Um, I don't think they hurt me badly, Harry. I've got to learn how to pace myself because I can't knock everybody over, if you know what I mean, Harry. I've got to pace myself sometimes. <laughs> well, we knew he was a tough opponent, but was he a bit tougher than even you thought? Um, not really as tough as I thought he would be. I had to pace myself. That's why I put on the extra poundage to sort of like try and weigh, weigh him down, Harry. And I did weigh, weigh him down. Now tell me about the eighth round, because when you caught him up the top of the head with yeah. that right hand, that's right. what set everything going. Yeah, he looked like he turned, he turned away a little bit. Yeah. And I tried to follow it up and um, Roy Francis saved him because he could have got serious damage. Well, he very nearly came out of the ring on top of me. Yeah, you could not on that suit, Harry, the <laughs> birthday suit. I'd like to wish you a happy birthday today to your birthday, mate. Now, are you happy with this performance? I mean, this is exactly what you wanted? Um, I'm happy with the performance, Harry, because I went eight rounds. I got a little bit of rust out myself. There's a lot of things I need to work on with my trainer, George Francis, but I can get better, Harry. I only can get better. He's a tough guy, and I needed this sort of like more than two rounds. Just eight rounds, good eight rounds, good pace. The guy pressuring me, Harry, and you know what I mean? Testing me. Everybody kept saying that you needed a decent fight, you needed a better fight, Yeah. and you got it. Harry, if I would have knocked him um, out in two or one round, I would have got criticised. If I stopped him eight rounds, I would have got criticised. All I, all I know is that coming up to Christmas, I'd like to thank God that I won. And hello, Nicola and Rachel. I know you're up watching. Take it easy. I'm home soon, baby. And to everybody in Springs for looking after me again. Thank you very much. When Wicked. do you think you might fight again? Um, uh, Mickey Duffy's going to be on my back. You I've know, got Mickey right here. Let, come in, Mick. When do you think Frank might fight again? I don't know. I, I would say early next year. Certainly not this year. Sometime next year, we've got to sit down. We've got to discuss an opponent with him, with George Francis. At the end of the day, these days, he makes his own decision, nobody else. I can recommend, George can recommend, but the final decision is left with him. G give me the name of a possible opponent you, next spring. You, Harry. You're, <laughs> you're past your 60s. You, really? Mate. You know, that you, could think, you, you could think of several opponents. Give me a night's sleep. Right. Give me a, right. uh, and incidentally, he's ready for Hollyfield. Oh, right. That's no okay. problem at all. Jarvis has got to <coughs> cough up his money a little bit, you know what I mean, and get it on the wet. <coughs> Okay, Indeed. thanks very much for being here. And much, uh, go away, have a nice family Christmas thank and you. enjoy it. I'd like to say a special hello and happy Christmas to everybody watching, especially at Springs. You're wicked. Thank What's you very much. Radio? For